So the latest iteration of marketing that comes from Hollywood, as we all know what it is, it is called fan baiting, okay? They think, that it's a very weird tactic, in my opinion. And I understand, I guess, the, uh, the thought process behind it. I understand it. But they think that if they come out and they openly attack the fans that uh, uh, supported the original IP work, right? If they openly come out and attack these fans and try to make themselves look morally superior while they're doing these hit pieces, that that is somehow going to culminate into increased sales, right? Or that's going to somehow culminate into increased views. But here's the thing. It's been proven over and over again that fan baiting doesn't work, okay? The chances of it working is probably 2% or less. And it, if it does work, it usually only works for the first episode. And then the TV show tends to die off if it's a show. Now, if it's a movie... You might have something different here. It usually doesn't work anyway because we've seen a ton of movies that have come out and attacked fans and they've all failed, every single one of them. They never even get their budgets back. It's actually pretty sad. Uh, probably the latest iteration of that is probably Bros. But the thing with Bros is that they didn't attack the, the people before the movie came out. They attacked people after the movie came out. They gave themselves like two days. They had a bomb in the uh, box office and they blamed straight people for it, which was very strange, but neither here nor there. So. She-Hulk, of course, is probably one of the uh, biggest and most famous versions of uh, fan baiting right now because they are literally openly coming out and attacking people left and right. Aside from the Velma trailer, She-Hulk is probably the worst when it comes to this stuff. So she came out and they are saying now, the entire She-Hulk team is basically coming out and saying that the fourth wall breaking finale that they delivered uh, is basically a big fuck you to toxic Marvel trolls. That's what they're calling you. They're calling you a toxic Marvel troll. They're calling you the person who's always been into comics because these fake fucks, these writers who wrote this show, they love to pretend like, oh, yeah, She-Hulk was my favorite comic back when I was young. Fuck you. You're lying. OK, you are lying. You are fucking lying. It is so obvious that you are lying about that. OK, you're not a fan of the comics at all. You're pretending to be a fan of the comics because that's what your job entails right now. But if you were doing a regular TV show, I guarantee you would not talk about the fact that you read comics when you were younger. You're full of fucking shit. Nobody believes you. Nobody, okay? Now, with that being said, <laughs> they uh, basically have come out and said that everybody who didn't like this show is essentially a toxic Marvel troll. So we're all toxic Marvel trolls, basically. We have no validation in what we're saying. We're just trolls. That's all we are. And we're toxic because we don't agree with everything that, that they're doing. But let's get further into the article. So this one is going to come to us from Variety, unfortunately. And it says, She-Hulk team explains the fourth wall breaking finale and delivering a fuck you to toxic Marvel fans. That's amazing. I mean, you know, it's really about the customers at the end of the day. But clearly, you don't really care about that if you're telling the customers F you, you know? So it says, throughout She-Hulk Attorney at Law, Jennifer Walters, a.k.a. She-Hulk, repeatedly breaks the fourth wall by not only directly addressing the camera, but acknowledging that she exists in a Marvel Studios superhero TV show. In the season finale, pointly titled, Whose Show Is This?, Jennifer smashes out of the show entirely, jumping through the Disney Plus portal to confront the writers of the show about why the finale is so needlessly convoluted, extraneous, nonsensical plot lines, including one about a cabal of toxic fanboys who troll Jennifer online about being a female superhero who doesn't deserve her power. Eventually, Jennifer confronts the one in charge, no, not Marvel Studios chief Kevin Feige, but Kevin, or knowledge-enhanced visual interconnectivity Nexus, a sentient robot armed with the most advanced entertainment algorithm in the world. And you know what's funny? So, <laughs> I know they're joking about the fact that the show was written by an algorithm, okay, at least in the finale anyway, but I would damn near say that that's fucking probably very true. That's very true because we saw the instant switch, right, from when Endgame ended, right, and it went into phase four, the the massive shift that the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe took. Uh, versus what it was doing before you know it has been a complete and utter 180 and that's why it's dying you know because they basically they were overconfident that's really what it is they were overconfident and they thought that they can get away with the nonsense that they had planned so they said okay we built this fan base over 10 years we're going to be solid no matter what we do Let's start putting out this trash. Let's start getting our ESG scores up because we got to make sure we make movies that are all about diversity, equity, inclusion. Let's get it out there while we can, while, you know, the MCU is hot. And even if it starts to dwindle a little bit, we'll still be fine. 
And the thing is, a lot of their movies have been trashed, okay? And a lot of their TV shows are pretty trashed too. But they are correct in an extent. They are correct. I will give them that. They have plenty of Marvel stands, MCU stands, that will follow them to the end of time. And that has been enough to support them, at least enough. You know what I mean? And their shows, even though some of their shows or most of their shows bomb, there are some big hits in there. Like Spider-Man No Way Home was a big hit. Shang-Chi made very good money. Wasn't a big hit, but it made very good money. So there are some hits in there for sure that can make up for the fact that something like the uh, the Eternals completely bombed. You know what I'm saying? So it says, as Maltzlani creator and head writer Jessica Gao and director, executive producer Kat Koiro explained to Variety, Feige was in on the gag from the start and even helped to shape his AI avatar. They also talked about the satisfaction they felt in seeing real-life online trolls use the exact same criticisms of She-Hulk to show that the fictional online trolls in the show used against She-Hulk, the character. As Maslani addressed Jennifer's romance with fellow attorney Matt Murdock, a.k.a. Daredevil, while Gao and Koiro shed some light on the introduction of Scar, the surprise son of Jennifer's cousins Bruce Banner, a.k.a. the Hulk. Now, when they, <laughs> when they introduce Scar, Scar looks like, honestly, Scar looks like if a TikTok boy, right, a boy on TikTok, imagine a TikTok boy. And then he basically got Hulk powers. That That's essentially, let me see if I could pull, pull this shit up because that, that way... That way you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's terrible. Like, <laughs> this is pretty bad. Look at this. So this is this is comic book, right? This is comic book Scar, right? And this is... <laughs> this is MCU Scar. <laughs> I can't. I can't with this shit. Like, how do you go from that? How How do you go from that to that, bro? Like... Wow, MCU, what are you doing? What are you, what, <laughs> what are you doing? It's it's insulting. It's like that's not. I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know, man. I don't even know. But let's just get back into it. So it says, uh, she starts asking some questions. It says, in addition to breaking the fourth wall, the finale tackles some of the exact same trolling comments that Marvel fans have been making. How did it feel to watch that happen as the show aired, knowing how the finale would turn out? Tatiana Maslany said Jessica Gao is a genius and knows about the culture we're living in and her position in it when she's writing these stories about a woman superhero. She knows what that response is going to be. As a cast, it was delightful sending each other uh, troll responses like, oh my god, give them a week and then they're going to literally see this pop up verbatim in the show and become the villains of the show. It was thrilling. So think about it. Think about it really quick. These people are excited and happy over the fact that they are pissing off the original fans of Marvel's IP. This is where they're at. These women, this is why I keep saying She-Hulk was written by angry women, produced by angry women, and marketed to angry women. This is their this is their market. Vindictive, literally like so butthurt, absolutely angry, lonely, miserable, feminazi women. This is exactly what this show is made for, and this is exactly who made this show. Those kind of people. So when they come out and think that they're so genius because they, they put into the show exactly the criticisms they got, just imagine. Just imagine something. So they were more... Oh, God. It just it hurts even talking about it. They were more inclined to make a bad show so that it can then do a finale that talks about how bad their show is versus just making a good show and shutting up all the people who would have potentially trolled you about it anyway. So you decided to take the petty route because you are a petty person. That is who you are. You are purposefully, once again, like I said in the beginning, fan baiting people. You are trying to do that and you purposely made a bad show. That's what you just admitted. You purposely made a bad show so that you can then do a finale talking about how bad your show is and then say, oh, look, guys, we proved them all right. Look, these trolls, they said our show is bad. So we're going to say our show is bad to own the trolls. Whoa, what? What? How does that even make any sense? How are you happy about that? How are you excited about that? This is why Game of Thrones House of the Dragon is winning so much because that show was getting a lot of shit in the beginning. But you know what? They shut the fans up by producing a good show. Now people had no choice but to admit that that show is pretty good. Is it perfect? No, but it's pretty good. And that's it. Nobody's nobody's talking anything negative about the show anymore because the fans got shut up. They got shut up. But you guys are fan baiting people. You're petty, miserable bitches. That's what you are. You're petty, miserable, miserable bitches. You could put that in your show. Put me in your show after Doomcock, okay? Put me in your show. You could talk about me all you fucking want. But at the end of the day, you're still going to be miserable 
You're still going to go home, you're still going to be lonely, and you're still going to end up having to use that little machine you use because no man wants to come anywhere near you. That's just the fucking truth. So anyway, guys, I just wanted to bring this article to you. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, consider leaving me a subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to like the video, comment, let me know if you can say story. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Hypnotic out.